Welcome to Daily Armor. Today we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, looking at verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and I'm going to be thinking about the change that took place in my life. Um, whenever he saved me and how everything changed. I mean, there's not one thing in my life that didn't feel different, look different, act different, be different, everything in my life changed. And there's a verse that tells that specifically. Um, let's look at verse number 17 in chapter 5, and it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I love that because all things, every single thing in my life changed. Now, things didn't maybe look so different on the outside to maybe others, but boy, the change that took place. Now, I want to start before I get into this a little further. I want you to look at the very first word in this verse. Um, I, I love the scripture and every single word is important. And let's start with the word therefore. Um, therefore, if any man be in Christ, therefore, what's it there for? What's, what came, what was said previously that is kind of changing what's going on and, you know, switching our, our way of thinking. Um, and let's look at the previous verse, number 16, to find out what the word therefore is there for. Um, verse 16 says, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. All right, so what we've known before about Christ, before we received him as our Savior, was based on what the flesh knew. That is talking about those facts. Um, some of them maybe you believed. Some of them maybe you didn't believe. Some of them you understood um, the basic facts about him. Um, some of them maybe you didn't understand the facts. Maybe you didn't, maybe you were not aware of all of the facts that are stated in the scripture about Jesus. Um, those things that are recorded, those, um, you know, things about his family, things about, you know, where he, where he went and things that he did. Maybe that you were aware of a lot of things. Maybe you weren't aware, but just of a few things, but you were, we were aware of them intellectually. I was aware of them intellectually. I would read the scriptures and I would understand the facts of the scriptures. Um, but then after I was saved, a change took place. And of all the changes that took place, um, besides the fact that my sins were forgiven and that weight was lifted and what a change that was, that weight was off of me, but probably one of the, the most exciting changes that I experienced after I received Jesus as my Savior was the fact that His Word changed. It wasn't just knowing facts about him, but it was knowing him personally. Um, and it was my perspective of him changed. Um, I respected him before. I believed uh, what the scripture said about him before, but now I know him. Now it's different. So what's the therefore in verse number 17 about? It's before. It's, it's a change of perspective that before we were saved, these are some things that you knew or didn't know about Jesus. These were This was the intellectual part, the flesh. That's what the flesh is representing, what the, what the intellectual part of you knew about him. Um, whether you, you know, knew everything or just a few things or just a couple of things. Um, but now, therefore, since that you see him differently now, now, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And it, I like this, if any man, there's some of us ladies who um, it's kind of aggravating when the scriptures talks about men so much. But ladies, I'm telling you, when you look up the word man in the King James Bible Dictionary, it says whoever. That includes us. It's not just about, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just a, a way of, of wording everybody. Um, if any man, if any person, if any person, whoever whoever they are, whoever they are, if any person be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, what about him? 
What about her? What about me? What about you? Those of us that are saved, what happened? The scripture say, says that we became a new creature. And what does that mean? I'm not a creature. I'm a person. Um, we're, we're all created. We are created beings. Um, and it means that it's a new creation. God has, has changed us. He has made us a new creation. He has created in us something brand new. Um, I love that. I love brand new. And it says old things are passed away. The original way that I was made, I was made um, in, into sin. I was sinful. And not that I still don't sin. I still am residing in this flesh. My desires are different. I desire to sin less and less and less. Not become sinless here, sinless in heaven one day when I don't have this corrupt flesh anymore. But my desire is to try to sin less and less and less. Um, and old things were passed away. The way I used to think about things, the way I used to uh, make decisions about things, the way I used to, um, the, the things I used to let run through my mind, the things, the thoughts that used to run through my mind, um, the way I used to uh, maybe view, um, you know, view everything. I mean, every, every perspective has now changed because God changed me. My perspective is no longer the same. And you that are saved, your perspective is no longer the same. And if you go back and remember what you were like for me this month, um, next week will be 23 years ago that the Lord saved me. And I don't even really like to think about the way I used to think about things, the, my perspective. Um, and it's been so long ago that I sometimes forget, but the, the pastor in preaching made a mention about the change that, that takes place at salvation. And I just, I just kept pondering on that. And I'm like, you know what? That's one of the most exciting things that I can share with anybody is the change that took place inside of me. Now that the time I got saved, I had been faithfully in church for probably, um, probably a little over eight years. I was faithful. Um, in our, in our, in our home church, I was, you know, wanted to be there every chance I got. Um, the more that the opportunities came for me to be there, the more I wanted to be there. Uh, the more I felt this drive to be there, I was supposed to be there. Um, when I got there, it was, I was, I was always trying to learn more. I was trying to figure out why do I still have this empty feeling? Why do I still have this, you know, that, I, I don't belong, and, you know, and it wasn't really that I didn't belong at my church. I was very, very welcomed at my church, very much a part of the congregation. Um, but it was something inside of me says, why don't I, I you know, Lord, I, I'm, I belong somewhere. I belong, you know, to do so. I'm here for a purpose and I don't know what my purpose is. And I feel like I'm just wandering around and, you know, I have no direction. Lord, I don't have, you know. And I'm looking at others' lives, not that I was, was looking at them specifically, but I would just notice there was some kind of joy and peace and purpose that some of the others, not everybody, not everybody, but some of the others, um, I would just take notice of. And I'm like, they've got something special. And I was, in my perspective, I was like, if I just keep reading, if I just keep coming, if I just keep learning, if I just keep soaking it all in, then maybe I'm going to have what they have one day. And what I was missing was Jesus in my heart. What I was missing was Jesus inside of me, not just Jesus in my head, not just you know, gathering all the facts that I could gather, not just gathering all the information I could gather but knowing him personally, him speaking, he spoke to me on that Monday night. Next week will be 23 years ago. He spoke to me and he told me that even the devil and the demons believe and they know, they intellectually know who Jesus is. They even feared him. They were, you know, what have I to do? You know, what have we to do with thee? You know, oh, son of God. I mean, they were, they were trembling. They were terrified. That he could have done anything that he wanted to them and with them. And they were terrified. They knew his power was unstoppable. But yet, they didn't serve him. They didn't worship him. They didn't know him as their master. 
and what changed for me. I went from knowing a lot about Jesus to getting to know him. I met him and that was just the beginning. And if you're just the, if you're at the beginning stages, if you are newly saved, I encourage you keep getting to know him. Now you know him personally. He's spoken to you. He has saved you. You've experienced that. You've experienced that weight lifted off of you. You now have a new perspective on things. You have a new um, position here on earth. You have a purpose. You have a new purpose. You know, instead of the purposes that you had for yourself before, but now you have a God-given purpose. Um, gosh, you have a new place for you. There's a new place that he has made for you. He's making, he's preparing a place for us. Um, you know, I get to get a mansion, you know, uh, uh, my house is kind of small and, and, but I, you know, sometimes I think about that and I don't get discouraged about it anymore because I'm like, I've got a mansion. One day I'm going to be in a mansion and it's not going to, I'm not going to have any kind of, um, you know, problems with space or anything like that. I'm not going to have this flesh to have to deal with anymore. Um, so we have a, we gain a whole new perspective on things. Everything in your life changes the way that you see things, um, I noticed that even like I got saved on a Monday night and then, and we were having youth uh, meeting all that week. And then Sunday morning, everybody was gone. Everybody, everything was kind of back to normal. Nothing was normal from, you know, since Monday night for me, nothing was, was the same for me, but the normal, everybody, you know, all the visiting churches were gone. All the visiting preachers were gone. This was Sunday morning and the choir sang, God saves all sinners. And I saw it. I heard it differently that Sunday. They had sang it many times. And, but that day, that Sunday was my first Sunday since I had gotten saved on Monday. And I even heard it differently. The words meant more to me then. Um, the words in the, in the scripture, the scripture I was reading my Bible all week and things were just popping out. Um, things that I, before I couldn't get, I couldn't understand. Todd would, and I've shared this before. Todd would, we would study for our Sunday school lesson and, and it would be, you know, I got the facts. But I would tell Todd, oftentimes I would say, but, and I would point at my Bible and I would say, but Todd, there's something there and I just can't see it. He's like, Teresa, I've explained it. I've explained it and I've explained it. And he says, I said, well, I get that. I get the facts of it, but what am I missing? I'm missing something. And he's like, I don't know how to help you because I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it any, any further. And what it was, was that spiritually, I, I, I couldn't see. There was more to be seen in the scriptures. There was more there and I couldn't see it because I was spiritually unable to discern it. And now I'm a new creature. Now I have been saved by Jesus Christ. He revealed to me. He opened He opened up my eyes. There was no way that my pastor could reveal to me those things. Just like there was no way that Todd could explain it enough in the scripture that I was, and I was missing. I, I was, I knew there was more there and I just couldn't get it. But what changed? What happened? Therefore, whenever I met Jesus, and I accepted Jesus when I heard his voice and he showed me, even the devil, that demons believe and you're just a believer and you need to be saved. When he showed me what I needed to do and I accepted him and I cried out to him and I panicked at first. I was, I was all in a, uh, in a panic. I didn't know what to do. My pastor, I was in the back um, of our church. Uh, one of my friends knew I was upset, knew that I had told her, I said, I'm going to hell and I don't know what to do. And she went and got our pastor and he just comes in, you know, in the back and somebody else is preaching. He's available. Um, and I just praise the Lord for my pastor. He's in heaven now. I just praise the Lord for him. And he got, he's got such wisdom and such patience with me. And he took me into one of the Sunday school rooms, him and, and my friend did, and we were all three in there together. And, and I told him, I said, Preacher, I'm, I'm going to hell. And I, I don't know what to do. And he took me to scripture and I said, I believe it. I, I believe it, Lord. I, I, I believe it, Preacher. I believe it. I believe the Lord will save me. I said, but Preacher, I don't know how to ask. And he says, he'll even tell you what to say. 
You just pour your heart out to the Lord. You just pour your heart out to him and you you tell him, Lord, I'm I'm a sinner. And there is not anything good that I can do to get my way to heaven. There's nothing I can do. There is no amount of of ways of goodness, of good deeds that I could do for somebody else, of of sacrifices that I could offer or make because my I'm insufficient. And I just poured my, I don't even remember what all I said. All I know is I kept calling out to the Lord and crying out to the Lord. And he, he even told me what to say. He even gave me that faith to, to talk to him. And I didn't quit talking to the Lord until I knew I was saved. And I knew I was saved when that load was lifted. Man. You're talking about that, taking a breath, when that load is off of you, and everything changed. When I, And I stood up. As the load was lifted, I just stood, I was sitting at a desk. Preacher had me sit down at a desk, and I just bowed my head at this little wooden desk and this little chair, and I just was calling out to the Lord and confessing everything that I could think of to the Lord and asking Him to save me. And when He saved me, I felt that load just lift right off of me. And as it lifted, I stood. And I just took this deep breath. And I said, Preacher, I said, God just saved me. I mean, everything was different. Everything was different. Nothing was the same. Reading the Bible wasn't the same. The, the trees didn't look the same. Songs didn't sound the same. I mean, just everything changed. Um, I like when I was looking up some of these definitions and it's things that um, it's definitions that you you know and you understand but and we understand old things are passed away so the way I was was done passed away means it was in the past it was perished it was gone it was done away with behold that word behold that is that is like exclamation point behold I'm so excited to proclaim. All things are become new. All things. Everything in my life changed. And maybe, and I still was going to church. That that looked the same on the outside. I was still, you know, I was still studying for Sunday school. That looked the same on the outside. But I was like, now I was studying. I was like, Todd, did you see this? Did you, did you understand what this means? Do you understand? That's me in the Bible. That's me. That was when, when Jesus, when he was praying for his, his disciples, and he said, Lord, I not I don't pray just for these, but I pray for those who will. I pray for those who will. That's me. Todd, did you see that? That's me. That's you. They was praying for us. Before we were even born, he was praying for us. He was praying not just for his disciples that was with with around him, that was with him physically there with him, but he was praying, but he was said, Father, not just for these. But for those who will, those who will believe, and that's me, and everything changed. My perspective, every, if you are one of those who is just, you're just, you're torn, you're torn, and you don't know what to do, just keep asking the Lord to show you. But when he does show you, if he has already shown you, just accept him, just call out to him. Cry out to him and just let him, you know you're a sinner. And you have to, you have to ask him to save you. You have to call out to him and realize that he is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to be free from all these old things. He's the only way to be free from it. And he gives us a new life. And with that new life comes, wow, I'm talking just endless, endless possibilities. So it's a change took place the night I got saved. Monday night, I got saved at West Lenore Baptist Church, Lenore, North Carolina. A change took place. And every single day since, change is continuing to take place. He continues to grow me, to show me things new. I continue to hear um, messages that just inspire me, that, in, that include me that, um, you know, challenge me, that convict me, this Holy Spirit speaks to me, the word, his word just jumps out. I mean, it just happens. I'll be reading along and I'll be, oh, all of a sudden, that'll stand out. 
a change took place and a change is continuing to take place and he's continuing to work with us and he's so patient with us and if you're a new christian don't get discouraged when you don't have everything figured out and you don't you know it's, it's a lot of information all at one time give it time be patient with yourself god is so patient with us and he'll give you a nugget here and he'll give you a nugget there and he'll give you a glass of milk over there and then and then pretty soon you'll be on he'll be you know giving you a little bit of solid food and and then pretty soon you'll be finding out you can handle some meat you can take it in, and the more you, the more you, um, you know, get from it, the more that you're gonna be, you that God's using it to produce things in your life that you were like, I never knew this was a possibility. I never knew I could do this. I never knew that this was, uh, you know, something that was that the Lord would ever even think about wanting to use me for because I, I can't. And the Lord reminds me all the time, you can't, but. You can do all things through Christ, through through Jesus. It all is because of Jesus. The change took place, and it continues to take place, and it is just better and better and better and better. I like this at the end of it. All things are become new, fresh. New means brand new, fresh. And I like when I looked up the King James Bible Dictionary, I was like, I know what that means. But then this one word, um, said unprecedented, unprecedented. And I was like, okay, I know what that means. Let me look up that word unprecedented. Just let me, um, you know, let's, let me see that. It means never done or known before, never experienced. You are going to experience, if you are not a believer yet, but once you, and you have to accept, he is the, he is the gift that you have to receive and call out to him and say, Lord, I can't do anything to make up for my wrongdoings, but Lord, I accept his free gift and, you know, asking him to save you. And then when you, you know, he's done it. When he's done it, you know it. When you, he gives you a new life, you know it. And then all things are become new. You're going to be experiencing things that you have never done before. You have never known before. You have never experienced these things before. It is unprecedented, the changes that will take place. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.